What's up, Shorts Force? Welcome back to the channel. I've been waiting for this moment to share with you guys a recording here, conversation, talking watches with my buddy Brian Trump. And you have your own YouTube channel. And uh, we met a while back on YouTube. So we definitely am looking forward to having this conversation with you, man. But um, I guess just kind of give us a brief little introduction about yourself. And then we'll talk kind of how we met or interacted on the channel and your own YouTube channel and stuff. So yeah, tell my my followers and subscribers a little bit about you. Well, Dave, what's going on? Uh, thanks for having me on your uh... It's like a podcast almost, right? It's kind of, yeah. I mean, like, I don't, yeah. I don't have a real podcast, but let's go with a YouTube podcast. There you go. I think, yeah, I think it's cool that you're doing this. I follow every other one that you made. Thanks. Um, like you said already, my name is Brian. I have a YouTube channel, same as my name, Brian J. Trump. And uh, I have that for a while now. I haven't posted on it, but, you know, I was busy with a lot of things. And this year, I'm going to try to make more videos and, uh, you know, get some creativity going. Right on. And uh, as for how we met, uh, you know, it's no secret that we like watches. And uh, I believe, I don't know, I don't remember how, but I was searching for a particular watch and uh, your video popped at the, at the side of the, the screen. I clicked it and I saw it and I was like, oh, that's cool. Then I clicked another video of yours. <laughs> then I, and I saw that you were like all into homage and stuff and I think I believe that I commented like uh, you know all right but you have like a steak or something or something like that <laughs> yeah and yeah from there it just went on you know and uh, I think it's really cool that you know a platform such as YouTube allows um, you to have friends you know across across seas and everything because um, I don't know I don't know if I said this in the beginning but yeah I'm from Aruba so I'm like Pretty far away. I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's an island, you know, in, in the Dutch Caribbean. So uh, yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, I remember yeah. when we first we first started. Uh, I was making YouTube videos, and like, dude, you've been with the channel from like almost the start, and your your first comments, like, I couldn't tell because you know how in text, like, you can't tell like someone's demeanor or tone. And I was like, Is this guy like talking trash, or is he? legitimately curious <laughs> like at first i, I was like legitimately curious, curious i know, know man but it, it was kind of like this guy's kind of being a jerk on my in my comments but it's because you were like hey man all you have are homages like do you have anything else and i'm like i mean <laughs> i didn't know how to take oh, it at first. I, I was i was i was uh, i was also you know kind of kind of open up a rabbit hole there for homages myself you know because yeah. um you know i like watches i like other things you know uh, but I didn't see homages for, you know, uh, what they were like, like, they're not replica, but they like really good quality and maybe it's based off of this uh, um, design and it kind of looks similar, you know, I didn't, didn't really follow it. So when I saw yours and I saw the, the Feist yeah. and uh, the Rocco's, mm -hmm. then I went to click on that sucker and I was like, whoa, it's not even that cheap, you know, it's like almost 200 bucks. Right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what, I mean, I went down the same rabbit hole as you and uh, was watching a lot of, you know, the big channels, Teddy Baldassar and all these other guys that, um, you know, watch collectors. And it was like, I saw the luxury watches and I didn't really know much about kind of automatics, uh, mechanical movements. And so learning all that and then finding the homages and I'm like, man, no one's reviewed this watch. Like it's 200 bucks. Like that's a lot of money for for me at the time, like as you know, most watches I oh, wouldn't spend it. Dude, yeah, I was like, I'm. I don't know if if it's gonna if I'm gonna regret this decision. So that's yeah. And other people who know me that know that's how my channel started with doing kind of watch reviews. But it's my personal collection too, like my journey in it. So I didn't, you know, I get a lot of requests. People, hey, can you review this? Hey, can you review that? And it's like I really would like to, but I can't just spend all my money on watches yeah. that people want to see like to send out to you, you know? yeah that's different for sure but yeah so it's it's a challenge kind of juggling that but dude yeah your channel definitely inspired me and i know uh when we did our 12-hour live stream with um average joe watch reviews we had you come on and we were talking a little bit but i know there was some technical stuff so this is kind of piggybacking off of that and i'll put a link for everyone that wants to see it as well but um yeah i was i was gonna say you definitely inspired me to like increase my production quality and value and anyone that's seen your work i mean dude it's to this day it blows me away the stuff that you do with your uh, your videos and um 
So it's really cool, man. I, I'm glad to hear you're going to be putting out more content this year. And I would definitely say yeah. everyone, everyone in the Schwartz Force, yeah, go follow Brian. Um, I'll link his channel in the description, of course. So that way we can get you a little more support. You know, I know it's it's slow starting back up again. So we got you covered. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That name Schwartz Force, I have to, I probably have to, you know, put a little trademark on it. Yeah, Made yeah. Some money. That's so funny, man. You you actually were the one who came up with the Schwartz Force recommendation. So yeah, kudos to Brian Trump. This is where it all started. This gentleman right here. <laughs> Schwartz Yeah, Schwartz because Ford, yeah. he said like, uh, may the Schwartz be with you, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's Schwartz Force. Yeah, man. That's pretty cool, man. It's so, it's so awesome how, uh, like you said, being in Aruba and be here in the States and then all these other YouTubers we interact with around the world. Um, it's such a cool thing. And the viewers, you know, subscribers too, like commenting from the different countries that they're in and sharing their experience. I get emails from other people too about, you know, just, hey, what do you think about this watch or try these straps? Like, it's so awesome, man. So, yeah, like I said, yeah. really cool. And I think, you know, uh, current current world events uh, also made it more um, more of a thing, you know? Yeah. Because back then, you know, you're so busy, you're doing this, you're working, you're doing that, but then you went through, like, all these lockdowns and all this stuff. What are you to do? Yeah. You're going to go on YouTube and, you know, uh, interact. And, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with this community. It's, 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 uh, it's nice. Yeah, it, it is, man. I agree 100%, 110%. And um, as I know, people are probably already anticipating or waiting for Let's do a wristwatch check. Uh, what do you got? You're my guest. What do you got on the wrist? Uh, on the wrist, I got the Alpha right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Daytona homage? Yeah. Yeah, man. Looks good. I love the black uh, sub dials with those because that one has like the piston, the old school Daytona style, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. the homage with that Paul Lumen uh, thing yeah, going on there. there and go. I have it on this... Uh, Look up, look up. I think it's like an olive green or almost navy green. I'm not really sure. Yeah, like an art, like a, we call it army green here. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had it on the original strap or the bracelet, but that was, like I said, you can just fold it into a little ball of that would mean you can just throw it away. It was utter garbage. <laughs> Dang, man. I sometimes that's like, a, I know some people that's a deal breaker, right? Like the bracelet, but I always look at it as, I swap straps so often, like, yeah, like, yeah, I would like to have a good bracelet. It. Yeah. Like, but if it sucks, okay, I'm just going to toss it to the side or save it. If I ever try to sell the watch later, you know, but, um, it looks good. And that, that particular alpha, cause I, I haven't owned any alphas or, or tried them out, but they seem to make pretty high quality, like specs, all the, yeah. the features, everything. So that's cool, man. Yeah. And this was, uh, wasn't this super cheap. I bought it on eBay. And I believe it was 180 bucks. Dang, so yeah. So you're getting a yeah. lot of, uh, expecting a lot of the best, yeah, kind of quality stuff, so. But it was, it was, it was, a, it, it was more of an impulse buy. It wasn't something that I was like, yeah, I need to have it. I love it. I have no story with it. It doesn't mean anything to me. Okay. You know, but it's, uh, it just, I was watching reviews and then I saw this, this guy that posted, because there's, there's not, there, there are a few reviews, but they're not like super, clear image mm -hmm. you know and the ones that do i don't know if you have this day but when you see videos and you're like just turn the watch i want to see it yeah come on all right press the crown let me see how that works. is a screw down you know yeah All you're waiting things. but um i feel like if uh if you could see me my my knee is doing this while i'm watching the video like come on come on let's get to the <laughs> like just anticipating get the stuff already <laughs> let's get to the goods yeah i'm so guilty I saw of it too. A video and it was just one very very good high quality video yeah. and i believe the title was uh um high gloss or glossy um <laughs> i think we lost brian i think he did <laughs> I think he froze. Give me a sec. Let's uh, we'll get him back in here. Yo, you there? Yeah, you're back, man. <laughs> Something happened. Not sure yeah. what. You were talking in your face. It's gonna be great. I'll edit. I'll edit it. But your face froze, oh, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah, man. Uh, no, but I was saying. I was saying. Uh, I saw. I don't know if, if this came out, but I was. Uh, hey, you froze on the chat, lol. Yeah. yeah. The, the title but, of it. Uh, glossy something i saw i saw a video it was the only video it was a high it was a video that the title was high gloss 
something, high gloss, um, um, alpha. And then I saw it and that thing was shiny. I was like, you know, the little, what's, what's that? The, you know, the friend of, not friend, the Frodo dude, you know, it's like, he needs the ring. <laughs> yeah, dude, Gollum. <laughs> I got, yeah. I was like, wow, I need it. And uh, yeah, went on eBay and I got, a, you know, one of them. The first one I saw that said, said high gloss and I ordered that sucker. Nice, man. Yeah, it looks great. And I've, I've, I've come across some of the alphas on uh, eBay as well. Um, I'm just, dude, you know how it is. Like, my list is just so long of stuff I want that I just, it's just a matter of if I find a good deal and I just jump on it right then and there. So kind of, I'm impulsive yeah. too like that. But this year I'm struggling because I'm trying to save up for a nice piece, which we'll get into a little bit later. But yeah, man, yeah. Um, that alpha is it's killer, killer Daytona homage, Paul Newman, love it. And um, okay, so let me give you, yeah, let me give you oh, my you retro have? check. So I actually have my brew retrograph, um, but I have it on the oh, nice. price bracelet. Yeah, man, I uh, you should, I had this on leather for quite a while, and I decided to throw it on the, the bracelet and enjoy it for a little bit. But um, yeah, wasn't a cheap watch, um, but I love it, man. I, I wear it pretty often, and you know, for four hundred bucks. Um, it's wow, got a lot 400 of bucks. yeah it's legit but it, it's specked out i mean it, it only kind of gives me that um what am i trying to say yeah i have <laughs> the, the, tag, the name the of tag that wire. Watch. yeah the monaco tag, yeah. yeah so and a lot of people monaco, that. that's right yeah and, and i guess so comments i get on that all the time i love the colors but it's same thing kind of like with you it doesn't really have a a special story but brew was one of those micro brands you know based here in the u.s that i just had always kind of had my eye on um, but never found them they were always sold out online and i found this one on ebay and it had the beads of rice bracelet and two leather straps and it was going for oh, wow. um, like a really good price there was like over 40 some 50 people watching it and i knew it wasn't going to last and so i told my wife like ah, 400 bucks. Get it. i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it so here we are but yeah <laughs> So I'm kind of curious because I know we've we've talked briefly, but um, just to kind of let everyone else know, like for you, what got you into watches? What kind of started your journey? Like, how did it all begin? Um, I guess I always had a fascination with watches. I remember as a kid, uh, I would draw these these crazy watches, you know, and then okay. I would fantasize of having like a digital watch. I would go to school. And, uh, you know, growing up, we weren't like the richest people, mm -hmm. uh, but growing up, you know, and, and some of my classmates, maybe they have like a Casio or something, you know, or they had like a little, little watch and a press a button and then it lights up. And uh, the first watch I ever got uh, was from a cousin of mine. She's a lot older than me. I'm 36, she's probably 50 or something. Mm -hmm. But at the time, uh, I think she was already working. I was probably nine or eight or 10, I'm not sure. Okay. But she came uh, to my grandma and she had a watch and it was on this, this um, kind of, um, yeah, it was on a strap made out of uh, uh, like, you know, like a, like a, clo a clothing uh, type of oh. strap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a cloth. It, was, it wasn't like this. It was like okay. more like a, like a piece of, uh, yeah, like cloth. It was kind of weird, but it was green and black and there was like this little digital watch on it and I thought it was shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> put it on and you know yeah I was constantly looking at it and it was cool and yeah. my sister was always um, encouraging me she also drew up you know watches and she would say like yeah you press this button and the TV comes on and yeah, all there this you stuff go. Yeah, and yeah. who knew well, years later you would have Casio that you know press a button and you know the TV goes on and uh, and coincidentally that was the second watch I got from my father it was a Casio with a green button and you can do some damage with that, you know? There you go. <laughs> and uh, as I grew older, I saw that my father had like gold watches and uh, he had a very beautiful one that he had from the 70s and he used to work in the casino. And uh, it was a uh, DeVille that was like 14 carats, nice and thick, you know, had no, uh, no, no strap or anything. I mean, it was just solid gold. Yeah. So if your wrist was too skinny, it wouldn't fit you. It was too fat, it wouldn't fit you. It was just, you know, Either it fits you or it doesn't. Right. And, uh, you know, on his wrist, it fitted nice. And he had like, this gold pinky ring, you know, diamond. You know, looking like a real uh, gangster there. Yeah, but there I go. didn't think much of it back then, you know. 
right. as I got older, then I saw it and I was like, oh, that's actually a very nice watch. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, sadly, he sold it off, you know, when he was, uh, I don't know why. I would have bought it from him, but I didn't even know. He didn't know. Yeah. But, you know, and, and that's how I got more interested in watches. And as I grew older, you know, I had phases, you know, you have phases that you just get any type of watch you want. Sure. You know, I get this, I get that, oh, a diesel, a this and that, you know, yeah, fossil yeah. or anything. And you, you think it's just, it's shiny or it's big and it looks cool. Wow, it's a, it's a nice watch. Yeah. But, you know, I think the watch collecting, it, it matures, you know, with age and, 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 you know, you're probably then you don't, you don't care about, you know, 50 watches anymore. You only care about a few. Mm. And then from there, but it could be different for everybody. Sure. But for me, that was the case, you know? Nice. Yeah, I, I agree. There's definitely um, there's a level of discovering what you what you like yeah. and, and your taste change as you get older, you mature a little bit more like, you know, the big dinner plates we used to wear in the early 2000s. They're not they're not the same, you know, the diesel, um, the, the, the yeah, only for the brave huge, huge things. I right? have one, by the way. <laughs> nice. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So what do you What's in your collection that you still wear that you rotate through currently? Like how many and, and what do you still have? Well, the watches that I do wear right now, um, let's go for the top three, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, uh, start, well, let's start with the top three and then work our way. Let's see what you got. Work them. All right. So the one that I wear usually the most, all like all the time, uh, has to be my SKX. Okay. 007. So yeah, and I have it for some time now already on this uh, this brown strap. Even though good. the the Jubilee bracelet looks amazing yeah. and feels good too, you know, I, I always thought it was a, like this cheap type of thing. But when I once I put it on, I was like, wow, that's very comfortable. Nice. So this has got to be the top one. Okay. And probably never will get rid of this. You know, okay. I don't know why. I just, I just have comfort with it. Yeah, I have nice memories. I bought it right on vacation time with the wife and everything. So yeah, every time I look at it, it's like happy times, you know. Yeah. So cool, man. That's got to be top one. How long would you say you've had that watch? I think about uh, three years. Okay. I think three years. Nice. I, I will. Yeah. I believe so. It was three years. Two years. Or so. I gotta go. I don't know. I gotta double check. Yeah, it's but cool. the second one I got in the what was the last one? The last um, world championship of soccer, mm-hmm. and it was in Russia. Remember? Yeah. So I bought a Russian watch just to you know, because me and my wife were crazy about you know soccer every four years, and uh, yeah, our our team is you know we always go we're through Germany. Okay. And. Um, <laughs> This was just, you know, I was like, I gotta get me a watch that, you know, remembers me this time. And, you know, I went into another rabbit hole for Vostok and Vivius. Yeah, man. And this is such a cult. Such a cult following movement. I mean, people, so this is like such a cult uh, following thing. And people like uh, customize these things. I don't know if you've seen it, but, you know, they buy different cases with this type of movement. you know, it's just, it's amazing. It looks very cool. And they have nice watches too, but I chose to go with the Bostock and Fibia, the scuba dude. Nice. What and, kind of strap uh, is that? Is that a it. suede? This is like this, yeah. This is a benchmark or something like that. And it's like okay. suede. And the only thing I have with this watch is, you see those lines? Yeah, what's up with that? Anytime I put this on, it has like two laps. So I, I got to bust the polishing cloth. <laughs> I probably file down those lines. Yeah. But, uh... But then it goes away after a while, you know. Yeah, so. that's cool, man. And and that's the thing I love about those kind of natural leathers and suede's, like that. You know, you you scuff them or whatever, and you can just rub them out, like it's no big deal. But it looks good, man. And the third one, as you know, is probably the least expensive of all, but is just for the um, the emotion behind it, the feeling about it, the, the memory about it, and that's just got to be my citizen. The WR100, that, that's it. Nothing okay. special at all. Like a little uh, two tone. Yeah. Yeah, it was two tone. I think it was maybe uh, 200 bucks when I bought it or something okay. like that. But uh, I bought it a week before I got married because nice. I had to have something on my wrist, you know, stuff like that. So I bought it and 
and I put it on. I have a whole video, you know, when I got married, putting it on and stuff yeah. like that. I said I do, you know, I said I'm doing this, but the bracelet uh, it fell, fell on the floor, it got scuffed. Then uh, I lost the link, and ever since I have it on this black NATO. It looks. And, uh, it like actually works gold. really well. Yeah, man, I yeah. like that you went with the gold hardware on it because it kind of like pops like with that black and the gold. Yes, yeah. it's nice. So that's it. And this is probably my favorite of all. Yeah. So I wear this a lot too, you know, and I don't have to shake it or anything. It's just you know Echo Drive, so mm -hmm. it goes on forever. So yeah. yeah, very cool, man. Okay, so those three have they all kind of have a story behind them, some sentimental meaning. Yeah. So those are staying in the collection. It sounds like. Yeah, and I also have this one. Um, which did a lot of videos on them before. Okay. And this is Doug Meister. I got this for my birthday from my wife, but because it's such a big watch, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> it's so I like wear it once. Yeah. I wear it once in a blue one. I'm not going to get rid of it. Okay. Just for the fact that my wife got, got it for me, but you know, it's, it is, it is a nice watch. It's, it's, it's good. It pairs up perfectly with it. that, yeah, with that shark mesh bracelet too. It looks so good, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Cool. I like it. And the other one I have that I don't wear as much is this one, which is the uh, Citizen Caliber. Okay. I mean, supposedly they uh, made only twelve hundred of these. I have some. Yeah. And um, have like this is the rose gold one. Okay. I see that. And yeah. This one is 17 out of uh, 2,100. 2,100. That's why it's called 2,100. They have supposedly been 2,100 of rose gold, the silver, and I think the gold. I'm not sure. Okay. I got to double check that. But that's supposedly the story of these watches. Look, it pairs up big and, with that, uh, that brown, too. Yeah, and what happened was <laughs> one of the, the dials here, I don't know if you guys you can see it, the sub dial. It has like a rim, and that rim came off. I have no idea how it fell very hard on the floor, and the rim came off, Dang. and it got matched between the the, the hour hands and the, the minute hands. So I had to send this all the way to Miami to get it fixed. And funny story, it got fixed during the pandemic times, and I haven't received it months. <laughs> it, the guy, I even thought, well, I lost the watch. You know, <laughs> it's go. gone, yeah. Uh, it's gone. It's fine. So the guy eventually fixes it and sends it back. And when I do get it, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. It's not ticking. It doesn't work. What's going on? Oh, and man. the guy's like, I didn't do anything with the with the watch or I didn't do anything with the battery or anything. So he didn't know what was going on. But I think because it was so long without seeing the sun or the crown was out, something happened to the battery. So if I wanted to work eventually, I have to change the cell. The battery cell, which are you know special batteries that can recharge and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it can work again. But also this watch has no really, uh, you know, it was just a. Uh, I just picked it up, and uh, yeah, that was it. If I can sell it, I'll probably sell it. Okay. Doesn't mean anything. So that one, that one's kind of could end up on the chopping block someday. Yeah, the chopping block. And here we go for all the people that hate these type of things. And I, go. I, I hate it too. You know, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, that's the other one. But this, my Apple. People yeah. hate these things. You know, they're not, they're not even considered watches. They're just, I don't know what it is. You know, but I have this forever. It was probably the first one. It was expensive too back then. It was like 600 bucks. Dude, yeah. Like that. You know, the ceramic back and all that shit. You know, the sapphire glass and mm -hmm. whatever. You know, but yeah, I use it. And the one that I really want to show now, but I don't have it with me uh, because um, I gave it to my father-in-law, you know, mm -hmm. he gave it to me and I, and I fixed it, you know, but he saw it back when he was like all polished and stuff. And there is where you see two sides of the world of yeah. people, you know, my side, the watch is ruined. I don't, you know, I can't even look at it. And for him, he was like, oh, it looks nice. It's nice and shiny, you know? So oh, so tell, walk people through this story because I know it and some others do. But okay, so yeah, let's, let's right. tell so, us what happened. So it was a 1972 Omega Constellation. And it was a very beautiful watch. And my father-in-law, he gave it to me. He's like, oh, the watch doesn't work. 
doesn't take, I don't know, fix it or anything. So anyways, so I was like, well, it looks nice. It's an 18 karat gold two-tone, you know, and it's a beautiful watch. Uh, just the dial, you know, when something's very old, it, it, it gets a layer of, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, yeah, something on it, it looks dirty, yeah, you know, so. But it, it, it still had everything written on it. It had constellation written on it, everything. So I go to this watchmaker, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm, I give it to him, and um, and I'm like, well, the watch does not, it doesn't work, or you know, you shake it and it, it, it you know, ticks for like five seconds, then it stops. You fix it. It's like, sure, I've been watchmaking for a long time, you know, I even restore watches. Yeah, that's the and key I'm word. Like, restore. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can make it nice and shiny again. It looks good. I'm like, all right, man. So I give it to him. You know, all. You know what my trust and everything went to this guy because he obviously has a shop right he can watches so here you know there you go <clears throat> a week or two goes by and he calls me up he's like yeah your watch is ready you can pick it up pretty sure you're gonna be very happy I'm like whoa okay <laughs> so i go over there and i get the watch and i didn't know what to do i don't know how to act <laughs> or how to you know what to say to the guy because right. i couldn't believe what he did so what Obviously, the watch was sticking. He cleaned the inside, and it was working great. Yeah. But this guy, I have no idea what he did, but he cleaned the entire dial. Like, cleaned it. It's, like, shiny. Like, it's just a plate of gold. Yeah. It was just shiny. Just you know, the only off. thing you could see on it was the Omega logo, which, you know, is, is something that they, you know, I don't know if they glue yeah. it on. It was applied or, right, right. Yeah, just like the indices, you know, it's like in there. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, bro, um, what happened to the dial? He's like, yeah, I told you I'll clean it and I'll get I'm like, yeah, but you took everything away. You took Constellation away. You took the, the writing away. You took the whole... <laughs> you just, it's like yeah, no longer just, the... What, what did you dude. do, man? I was like upset. I had to pay the guy and I just went out there and I was like, nah. I even made a video of it. I remember. And, uh, but it was more like a rant video. Yeah, you're pretty video. pissed. I mean, understandably. And, uh, then I, and then my uh, my daughter, it was her birthday, and, you know, they, they came here. It was a little celebration stuff. And then, you know, he saw, he asked me for a watch. I showed it to him. He's like, wow, and it works now. It's very nice and shiny. I was like, yeah, take it back. You know? yeah. I don't I want it anymore it. because it, it doesn't give me that, you know, I don't know. People, they just, you know, it, it was just horrible. I felt, yeah, yeah. Dude, there's it was, you, and and the the crazy thing is, is I hear this about other uh, luxury brands too. Like, if you send a vintage watch, like you better specify what you do or don't want done because, yeah, they will on, I guess, just default. Rest not that this guy was, you know, he's. It's not like you sent it back to Omega, but. Yeah, you, you didn't know. He's like, all right, restore. And like, I hear the same thing. You tell me you're going to restore this vintage watch. I just think you're going to maybe polish out the, the case, clean up the glass crystal a little, and we'll be on our way. And the fact that he just took all of that patina along with the printing off that dial is like, bro. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. It was heartbreaking. And I, you know, but then what I said, what I said at the beginning of my story there is like two worlds. You know, right. on the one hand, my 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 father is like, "Wow, it's beautiful, it's shiny, it's good. It great." Thanks, and son. I'm like, "No, it doesn't. You can throw it away. It's a piece of shit now. It doesn't work. You know, <laughs> it, it's not worth anything." You, the guy just took away the 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 feeling of it being a vintage piece. Yeah. You know, so that was very disappointing. Well, I'm I'm yeah. I definitely learned a lesson through that experience you had too, because if I ever end up with a vintage piece that I want to have fixed or repaired and I don't want to send it to the you know the, the brand no, the watchmaker I, I would say double check or just you know yeah, have, yeah. Dude. Like, don't do anything to it like <laughs> even if it's like dented or has a scratch or something just leave it just leave it the way it is because that's the watch you know that's the history it carried throughout you know 40 years and who are you to go swap it out now and change it yeah you, know, it's, it's, uh, you don't do that I was very pissed with that guy. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, was it pretty expensive for him to, to fix it or was it relatively cheap? He, he, he asked me for, you know, almost like uh, 200 bucks. Okay. Which over here is like 350. So yeah. it worked. Well, I'm not going to take it. 200 yeah. bucks. 
he plays a watch for me, you know? Yeah, man. Like, I mean, the movement, he did fix the movement, and he did kind of clean it up in the back and stuff like that, but still, man, it was it was a shitty job. I shouldn't have paid him at all. And he yeah. was, he was like, even like, uh, um, it wasn't angry or anything, but he was like, he felt like insulted. Like, I, I like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, you know. Ungrateful. Yeah, I'm not ungrateful, but I'm like, you know, doubting his, his, his <laughs> you know, his skills of, of, of bringing things back to life, you know. I was like, man, you have no idea what you're doing. It's like, yeah, I've been doing this for 40 years, a watchmaker. Like, well, if you're a watchmaker, you're supposed to know you don't clean the face, dude. Yeah. You know, but. He's part of yeah. that. He's part of that, like bringing everything the the luster of it back not the keeping the originality and the yeah, I think so. yeah i think so that was he's horrible on, there. he's on the other other camp you know and and i can relate that to i had there was a point you know years and years ago where i wanted to get into um, car detailing and like i kind of like do my own business and and restoring the leathers headlights like all of these the paint just doing everything like making it look like a million bucks fixing what i could right reasonably and you come to realize that one people don't want to pay you for what it would take but there's also a there's two camps of car guys and gals and the everyday person the everyday person looks at their car and they just you could like half-ass clean it and just like wipe it all down vacuum clean it and they're like oh man it looks brand new and I'm like, no, like if I'm going to restore, like you look at my cars and like, I will get in all the nooks and crannies and like clean all the leather and just go all out. Right. And you could put that yeah. level of work into the everyday driver's vehicle and they would not know the difference. They would just look like, yeah, it looks good, man. Oh, how much? I'm not going to pay you for all that. <laughs> You're like, dude, I just like restored your car. Like yeah, probably, what are you doing? probably better than new, you know, like, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's definitely something that you have to like have a clear discussion of, are we on the same page? And you know, before we start paying money. Yeah, I, I probably, I probably blame myself too, because I was very nonchalant on, on believing, well, you know, he, he knows what he's doing and stuff, but maybe if I would have just said, please don't clean the dial or anything, if you want to take yeah. care, then probably he wouldn't have done it. So it wasn't entirely his fault. No, but still, he I mean, did it, yeah, you know, but still, just didn't know. I, I mean, know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for sharing the heartbreaking story. I know that, yeah, lessons, lessons for all of us to take away from that for sure, man. But yeah, and and I'm always kind of hesitant with um with vintage watches too, because like I don't know enough about them to know, like, dude, I could take if I bought a vintage. Let's say you spent five hundred bucks and you buy a nice vintage watch, I could take it to someone and like. They could swap out the movement. I probably wouldn't even know, or like you know, take parts out. It could be a Franken watch. Like I have no idea. So I just yeah, like, yeah. I got a vintage watch. It has a cheap Miyota something in that in there. You yeah. know? You're like, what's that sound? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But I know that a lot of guys are into it, and uh, it seems pretty cool. Someday I'm sure I'll go down that that rabbit hole. And same thing with Vostok's. Like this is the year I got to buy a Vostok this year at some point. Yeah. After, I gotta do it. I don't know that I'll get and into that. Nice yeah. Nice yeah. Yeah, man. I've seen uh I've seen a lot of other friends, uh, other YouTube friends and uh on Instagram and stuff, and yeah, they seem like a great bang for buck watch for sure. And they have like they have like super cheap ones. Like I believe uh this one I believe this one was eighty six dollars. Yeah, that's great. And it took forever to get here. Like, it took like literally four months to get here. <laughs> with, with a box, you know, in, 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 in Russia and everything, you know. But it was it was crazy. But they have like very expensive ones as well. Like okay. very expensive. You know, it's like um, all over the spectrum. It's yeah, crazy. that's good. It's good to have different price points to kind of explore. So yeah, I'll I, I plan on doing that this year. Um, it's funny because, well, for 2021, like we all have, I've talked with a couple other people and we're kind of talking about like, what are you going to do this year with your watches, your collection, or like where are you headed? So I know with you, there's those three that pretty much are staying in your collection, but anything else you kind of have had on your radar that you might want to buy or pick up? Well, like well, when we just spoke a few moments ago about, you know, different stages yeah. and, um, I've had I had the stage where I had a, a box, you know, when I used to live in, in the Netherlands, I had a box 
like you know, kind of like what you have, with big box. This is like a, literally a box for all of these types of watches in there and everything. You know, I would wear one, and months would go by or a year and everything, and then I would find one in, in the box I didn't even know I had. You know, like <laughs> that type of thing it was. You know, but I don't, I, I don't want to, you know, do that anymore. So that's why I purposely bought uh, a six piece um, okay. watch clock there. So I only have like six watches that I can, you know, rotate through. But now I'm growing more into, I believe I want maybe only three or two watches. Really? You know? But like, these, these, are, these, are, these are nice. I'm going to keep them, you know, but they don't have to necessarily be in, in the box. Right. So I can just, you know, be in another box and I'll just wear them whenever. Right. But I want, like, I, I, yeah, like three of those. And uh, one, which is, I really like this watch and I really want it. And I think I'm just going to work for it and save for it. Is the Omega the Moon Watch? Yeah. I'm obsessed with that watch. I don't know why. Yeah, man. Um, but I really want that watch, and I want it with the nail, with everything, with the, with the coordinates and stuff like that. I think it looks amazing. Hell yeah! But I'm, I'm gonna stay for that one, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for that one. And the other one is probably also a little bit far fetched, but not not impossible. And that has to be a Rolex. You know, it sounds really snobbish right now, but I have my personal reasons for it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's because I always wanted that that watch, you know, like a, like a day date or something like that, or a presidential or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be new because you can't even get them new. You know, you, you have to even, you know, wait like forever or you just, you know, you get a good deal. So okay. if I ever get that deal and it, it presents itself, I want one, I think before I turn, 45. I must okay. have one. Okay. You know, that's just a goal for me, you know, that I want. And that has been inspired by this um, this manager I used to have when I was 18. His name is Dimitri. And uh, I think he was like this Polish guy or something like that. And I used to work in the, the airport. And he always had the same watch. I'd known him for like three, three years, three, four years. And he always had the same watch. He never had a different watch, it's the same watch, and it was a gold Rolex uh, a presidential watch, you know, uh, like completely gold, and the, the dial was black. Okay. Like very fancy, you know, fancy watch. And you know, when you see gold watches, you can see immediately if it's real gold or right. it's just, you know, this. But no, when you saw that, you were like, well, that's just massive yeah. gold right there. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so fancy, it looks so boss. And the guy was a you know, very chill dude. And I remember <laughs> asking him once about the watch. And uh, he's like, oh, Jesus, Spikey. He called me Spikey. I don't know, because I had a spike hair back then. He's like, oh, Jesus, Spikey, uh, I have this since I, uh, how old are you now? I'm like, yeah, 18, that'll be 19. He's like, I have this since uh, 27, 28 years old. Like what really? So I think I was like, old. Oh, I think it was like fifty-eight or something. You know, yeah. then. And I was like, well, so you have this watch, this single Same watch, life. your whole life. It's like, yeah, good watch. I think it's cinnamon. Yeah, good watch. But he didn't care about it. He didn't even see it as a Rolex. Right. I didn't, you know, like I, like, like I jeweled about it. He just yeah. saw it as a watch that had go life. And I was like, wow, that must be a very good piece, you know? No kidding. So right. ever since I was like romanticizing about the idea of me having one, you know, before I turned 40 or something, you know. I didn't even ask him how he could afford that watch when he was, you know, 27. Maybe he got it from his dad, maybe he didn't, you know, I'm not sure. But he looked yeah. like a guy that, you know, always had his stuff together. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a nice car, he had a nice house, he had a good job. So, yeah, pretty sure. I never saw him with a, with a lady, though, or I didn't even know if he had kids. Okay. So, yeah. But that's another story. <laughs> but you know about the watch itself. I was yeah, I was just about to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say like, well, you said he had a good head on his shoulder. He had his stuff together. <laughs> I'm yeah, just kidding, yeah, right? Yeah. We we're, we were the ones no, that no, get into he, trouble, he, right? He, he, <laughs> yeah, no, he, he looked like he had everything going on for him. I don't. I actually haven't seen him ever since. You know, but I always remember that guy for that. You know, for that watch, and I was like, wow, you know, I'm gonna get one of those one day. So that's for me. I want to get it, you know, because like like this watch, the Alpha or the Seiko and, and all this stuff, when I die, you know, I can give it to my daughter, but it's not worth anything. 
Maybe the same will work something, you know, when I'm 90. I don't know. Yeah. But if, if, the, if I have the Rolex, it's something I can give to her. And maybe, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like family heirloom. You know, yeah. here you go. And That's cool. She can sell it one day. I don't know. It will be valuable. I don't know. I think it, it, can, it can hold a lot longer than this Alpha anyway. For sure. You know, so oh, yeah. Her, but yeah, this was my Pops watch and, you know, wore it for 30, 40 years. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. So man. That's, and, that's my take on that Rolex. Okay. So would you want the same black and gold or would you go for like a two-tone or all gold or champagne dial? Like, what do you think? You know, I have something with gold. Um, I really love the color gold. When I was younger, I had like all my fingers were like filled with ring golds, like real gold, you know, because I got them from my fellow father because he worked in the casino in the 80s, 90s, and that was like the gold rush era. Right. So he had like, you know, he had like rings, yeah, you know, uh, bracelets and everything. And when he got old, he didn't wear them anymore. So I just, you know, every time I came to vacation, I took one or two or three, and then <laughs> I had all my fingers filled up with, with you know, uh, gold. But my my wife at the moment, you know, at the moment she must hear me. <laughs> no, I mean my my wife currently she she doesn't like uh, gold at all. Okay. And uh, when we got married, I was like, "Yeah, I want to have a gold band." You know, mm-hmm. she's like, nah. I, "I like, I like white gold or platinum." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Wow!" Uh, so you don't like gold cards? It's like, yeah, you can't get gold because if you get gold, it won't match, and yeah, that's not good. I'm like, "Mom, I like gold," you know. <laughs> but five years later, almost six now, and I'm like, you know what? I like gold. If you don't like gold, that's fine, but I do. Yeah. So. If I could choose, uh, yeah, I, you know, like a gold watch, I think, yeah, that will, it's obviously more expensive, uh, but still, I think that will be the goal, like a gold, it, it doesn't have to be a, a black dial, it'll yeah. be white, or champagne, champagne yeah. you know, but it's just about, you know, having that, you know, that watch, and I know they're crazy expensive, they, you know, they're crazy, I'm talking about like, what, 20, 30 grand? Yeah, for the, especially if you want that presidential solid gold bracelet. Yeah, man. It'll happen. Yeah, but nothing is impossible. You know, you yeah. never know. Uh, I would say, like you said, goal of 40, maybe 45. Um, I could see it happening for sure, man. I, it's it's funny because it's like on my channel, I, I have no problem wearing, reviewing, buying like a $20 watch or, yeah, I've spent hundreds now and and thousands really when you add it all up and so it's yeah. kind of you know to each their own i i used to always think like i would never spend that much on a watch but i'm like leaning more towards like you know maybe one like someday like i yeah. could drop drop 10 or 20 grand on a really nice piece but it's just like yeah i'm not gonna go out and buy four or five thousand dollar watches in the span of a year or two or like you know but yeah. working towards that and, and owning it and like you said kind of having a an a family heirloom like you know my wife and i we don't have any kids but like i could leave it to my nephew or you know my niece and nephew or whoever like it's it's no big deal or a friend or whatever like pass it on like it's just at the end of the day it's just stuff right but i think that the the memories you build around watches like tend to have way more uh, value, yeah. whether it's yeah. a hundred dollar watch or hundred thousand dollar watch. Like that's where it's at, at least for me, that's kind of how I look. No, at that's true. So like time pieces, you know, they tell time, you know, right. or the certain time of, of your life. It's you so know, I have that with the Russian watch. So like the two most least expensive watch, they pay me the most, you know, like this, uh, the story for this. And then, you know, I got married in this. Mm-hmm. Even if I would have the, the Rolex or the Omega or anything, this would still be my favorite. Yeah. You know? I, but I, that's just a goal for me, you know, and I don't know, but people change. So maybe a year from now, <laughs> I'll go crazy again, Dave, and I'll buy the big box and I'll just fill it up again. Hey, we. With all kinds of watches, you know. We're, we're, well, you won't get any judgment from me or, or probably most of the people in, in the Schwartz Force. We we get it, man. I uh, I know you had shown me so the Feist, um, the Royal Oak homage, the skeleton one. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I know that, that caught your eye. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll pick one up someday and and review it. And maybe uh, yeah, check it out. I, I have the blue dial. No, yeah, you're right. That one, that one is on my uh, the next purchase I'm going to do. 
as I really like him. And it was different, you know, and I saw a review on it, a review on it, and you know, on the pictures you can't really see it. Heck, on the review even you can't really see it because it's, you know, you know, probably they have good lighting and stuff like that, but then it just looks like solid. And then when you get it, you're like, what is this? You know, <laughs> but in the video it looked it looked alright. I was like, Whoa, well, that's really nice. And the guy had a seven inch wrist, so do I. And it looked good on you know, on the shot. I was like, Well, I'll get it. So, but it was, it's not that ex, that cheap either. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like that two hundred buck range. You know, like it's it's not a cheap watch. I um, I, so like one of the things I like to do, and I need to do more of it. Like, dude, the content is just. I have a list, and and I feel so bad because I have to decide between like, do I post a podcast? Do I post a a watch review? Do I post a you know, a cheap watch or an expensive watch. Like there's so much, right. That I don't know what to do. And one of the things in the past I was doing these, they're called like cinematic explorations. And I did one on the Feist because I wanted to like get up close. I feel like it's a $200 watch, but let me macro in and show you the finishing. Like it's not an yeah. AP. Let's not like, let's just get that clear. Right. It's not an AP. It's not an AP level of quality, but for 200 bucks, like it's pretty impressive in my opinion like for what you get yeah and i know that it gets hated on so much you know some watches they really get like hated on because it's it's a direct homage i guess you could say like pretty much a copy um but i like it i enjoy it i put it on my wrist i roll around like go out no one ever stops me and says is that an ap or is that a royal oak like no like no one knows outside of this community maybe, maybe from 20 people one will know and they will be like hmm. <laughs> it's probably like you look at it very carefully. Is that an AP? No, I'm not yeah. sure. I can't see it. Homage, AP? anyways, whatever. The guy's already gone, you know, so they can't even see it. But yeah. and then they'll be checking out the rest, you know, the clothes, the shoes, you know, yeah, the car, cash. what you get into. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but some people are oblivious. They will be like, Yeah, it's a nice watch. Wow, that's really cool. And some people will be like, You know, whoa, is that a royal oak? Oh, oh, okay, all right, yeah, nice. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice watch. Nice watch guy. Yeah. No, yeah, I've never, works. I've never come across anyone snobbish with watches in person. It's no. always online. It's always in the comments. Yeah, it's always, no. No, it's, if I'm pretty sure if it's like in person, and I think they would probably do this as well, be like, Oh, is that a, oh, can I see it? Oh, wow. That's, that's really good. That would be like, you know, because the quality is nice, you know, it's like heavy and stuff. And for me, it's not a, uh, it's not about, you know, it being homage or anything, it's just about the quality. You know, you see some of these watches, it can be homage or anything. That's what I said to you the other day as well with, uh, with replicas. Replica. Like some of them are so well made, or, you know, the, the, the material is like, it has a nice heft to it, you know, the sweeping motion, it's just, you know, sapphire glass. Wow, you know, it's, it's a good piece. It's a good piece. In itself, the watch, yeah, I think that's like where it's like the watch is a good watch. It's just, again, the replicas where a lot of people draw lines and then the homages, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the homages, I feel like there's always a point where there's some trade-off somewhere that like it's yeah. very hard to find a, I would even say inexpensive or cheap homage that takes all the boxes and does everything well and that you just absolutely love you're going to be spending probably two, three, four hundred dollars to get that level of everything's good. It has good loom. It has good, a good movement. It has Sapphire. It has the finishing, like everything to check all those boxes. It's going to be in the multi hundred dollar range. Usually. You know, Dave, like, um, have you ever driven in a Bugatti? I have not. No, like, let's say, <laughs> have like, you? you know, <laughs> No, but I mean, there's a Bugatti, you know, just the beautiful, these things, they even make them out of, you know, uh, marble, you know, the, right. the, the pieces and stuff like that. So let's say there's a nice Bugatti right there in the park a lot. It's not running or anything. It's just sitting there. First thing I would go is like, hey, here you go, take a picture. I'll just stand next to it, take, take a picture, you know, hey, wow, it's a Bugatti. Yeah. It could be engineless. It could have nothing inside, <laughs> but still you want to stand next to it just because of, you know, how it looks. I think it's the same thing with replicas, you know? Some people will never, I will never be able to even, uh, uh, able to drive a Bugatti, much less own one, you know? You never know, but yeah. still, 
it will be nice to just have a picture with it. I think it's the same thing with probably replicas. You know, some people, they will never be able to afford, like, I will never be able to afford a Richard Mim. I mean, less, who drops almost $2 million for one single watch? I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. So, Big money. If, if you could have one and it looks exactly the same, you just, I would think you just want to wear it. Yeah, that's kind of cool. You know, but it, the, the notion of it is just crazy. But I think, you know, that's the whole thing with some people with replica. Why I don't think if it, if it, if they would have want to have a diver, they could just buy an Invicta or they can just buy a, a Seiko. Mm -hmm. But they don't do that because they want to have the, the you know, the Rolex name or something, you know, because it looks cool. And yeah, that's how it looks like. I don't know. What is it anyways, you know? You're not killing anybody, I guess, killing an industry or something like that. You know, it's illegal. But still, um, I don't know. I don't pass judgment on people that, you know, would want to wear one or... Because you do have a lot of people like, yeah, it's, it's trash. And the people that wear them are fake, too. Come on. You know? <laughs> I think that there's... Yeah, we the watch, you know? Yeah, we've had... And this discussion, like, it gets brought up all the time, right, in the community where, you know, the industry <coughs> of replicas, counterfeits, like, it's definitely, like not okay right there's a lot of like lawn mon money laundering for example or funding uh less desirable things i had this talk with eric with rico's watches just a few days ago and it's like <clears throat> i get that too but what you're saying is definitely spot on there is a level of wanting it to a degree where like it's not just i want the homage people are like no i want it to say rolex or i want it to say R richard meal or whatever right so they'll pay the money to get the replica but really they're kind of like fooling themselves like it's just you could buy the homage and it could say a different brand and it's still in my opinion like you can enjoy the watch but it's not trying to be someone that's not and and what you're it's so funny about the bugatti thing because that's true like my dad and i we would do all these car shows and he bought a um 2008 challenger srt8 the first limited edition so it's a numbered vehicle it says that they're on the dash and everything really cool sick, sick car man and the first year it was like a unicorn in the like you know out in the wild you didn't see them they just weren't on the road and so when we'd go driving around like people would just stop and like look and, and you pull over some people oh my god like what what is this like they're out you got it so when we do car shows for sure man people would just walk up and this is a dodge challenger right like this isn't like a supercar but people would get out and they'd take pictures next to it and they'd like of course you know they're gonna hey check out my new ride <laughs> even though like yeah. it's just part of it right like you just want to have that kind of i guess experience with it near it next to it you know, even if if uh i guess a similar thing would be people buying the v6 or the rt versions and then they dress it up to look like an srt even some going yeah, yeah, to yeah. the some going to the length of putting the badging on it and you like look and you're like that's not an srt <laughs> so that's like i guess in the car with, world. Uh, with the, the, the chrysler 300 to make it look like a bentley you know right the coupe. <laughs> yeah. so yeah to each their own right at the end of the day um, like, i think that is extreme you know that is extreme yeah. that is extreme <laughs> but i don't know i uh, like i've owned yeah that that owned that that one that, that uh, was a uh, um, what was it again? The, um, the giveaway. The yacht master. Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, and I, I thought it was a interesting uh, looking piece, and I wanted to, you know, take it apart for uh, uh, education purposes. But I was like, nah, it's too nice to take apart. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's nice. funny. It's funny because it sits in my collection, and um, I've had like family come over, and I'll be talking watches, and I'll put it in the box, and like they'll see it, and they're like, "Hang what? on, is that a yeah?" yeah. They're like, that's a Rolex, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> and I'm like, that's a replica I won in a giveaway from, you know, fellow YouTuber, and they're like, they're looking at it, and they don't really know, right? So they don't know what they're looking for or anything. But I'll point out all of the, um, I'm like, if you look, if you hold it in the light, you'll see this laser etched crown, Rolex crown, like that's like to prevent, you know, counterfeits, and this has even that, like it's just yeah. checking all the boxes. That's crazy. And, yeah the dead giveaway i tell him is like as soon as i throw it on the time graph because i think it's beat it's i think it's twenty one thousand six hundred instead of twenty eight eight, and i'm like oh yeah there you go like that's where you can there you go, yeah. that's when you realize but um yeah man it's it's such a good 
it's it, the quality of it is done well. Like if it said a yeah, different brand, crazy. if it did, if it did say a different brand, it's a watch I'd probably like. Who did the uh, the? There's an homage of the Yacht Master. I think it's Pagani Design actually. Like and oh, people no, are yeah. wearing them, buying them, rocking them all day. Yeah, so it's the same thing. It's just it doesn't say Rolex, but yeah. But to me, like, you know, like the homage, yeah, it's a homage, but it's like, if I would just take away Pagani and put Rolex, it's the same thing. It's, it's also a replica then, you know, but it's, I just, you know, put another name on it, you know, and now it's a homage, you know? Yeah. But what is homage? What is homage to you? Okay? What do you, you know, like... So I think that, I think that the difference is clear in the branding, right? Like an homage stops at the brand and the logos because everything else the fight we'll use the FICE as an example it's it's like a ringer for the ap granted the size of it is a little bit larger um yeah the links aren't the exact same and the reason i know that is because i purchased a strap to put on that FICE and it's not and compatible, it's right so like i had to get the little tiny pieces to put in there in order to successfully swap out the strap so that's kind of um to me like it's not a one-to-one -one copy so i think with a replica it would be one-to-one -one. a replica you should be able to put any ap strap on there because it is a dead <laughs> copy right and then i also think that homages i like i'm tending to lean more towards homages that aren't exactly the same so um now there's always it's inspired, inspired by you know? right yeah so like it's it's cool you know but i also man like the Explorer, I just bought the Tassel Explorer. That looks nice, by the way. It is a, it's a yeah. ringer for the Explorer, but man, and the crown, but here's a difference, right? The crown is a little bit bigger, which in my opinion, it's the right proportion compared to the actual Rolex. The Explorer crown on the Rolex is like just a tad too small from what I see in pictures, right? But on the Tassel, I feel like it's just right. And yeah, 100 meter water resistance, ticks all the boxes has the glide lock on the the clasp it's brushed it doesn't have wow. a high polish like it's just to me how, how like, much was that, 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 that what, what was it? so i got a really good deal on it um they if you buy them i think if you buy them direct from south korea or wherever they're coming out of yeah, um, singapore i don't know i think that you can get them for like 200 to 250 but if you really? buy them, wow. yeah if you buy them from i think there's a price right. Yeah, I think there's a website in in the UK or somewhere else, and they're about three to three fifty. So you, it just depends, I guess, where you buy them. Where but, you get it from, yeah. Right. So um, I got mine on eBay for about two hundred. I'll just say that. Um, that was a deal. It was used, but like it's in a dude again polishing cloths, and the thing is awesome. So I'm gonna be doing a review on it to show people, like, dude, and and it had the box, it had extra links, like everything with it. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna put it on a nail, I think, right? You're just gonna no. Oh yeah, it's one of the bracelets where, and I got to borrow a one uh, one of the watches from, um, and I've said this in other videos too, but I got to borrow the Tassel Explorer from Chase over with All Things Random, and he was cool. He's like, we we swapped watches. I sent him the Rocco's um, Starry Night watch, and he sent me the Tassel, oh, and so we were kind of borrowing watches, and like I just I couldn't take it off the wrist. It was just really a really good watch so um I Might have to take that one out. yeah dude i was like i gotta get one of these it, so much this is how this is how out of control it is i like the to sell explorer so much i have the l'oreal submariner homage and i bought a to sell submariner and i'm gonna sell the l'oreal i'll compare them but i'm gonna sell it because it's like the to sell in my opinion is so much bang for buck and i picked up the the i'm sorry the uh, submariner homage for even less um but it's coming from canada and it's, and it's, and it's not a, it's not a bad name either it's a nice name to sell yeah. you know because what i have with some of these homages is the freaking name you know Dude. where did he come up with these names it's, you know and yeah. yeah some of them are just like what are you talking about it's where did you get bad. this name from you know so I have no idea and it pisses me off because it's like dude, it's this a watch nice watch <laughs> with a bad logo and a, and a crappy name. Yeah, who designed this stuff? Yeah. Um it's cool, man. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to share my thoughts on 
the to sell watches once once the other one arrives um and then i bought a lobini um give me one sec hang on real quick man oh you're good okay so this brand i reached out to on instagram uh lobini and i was like hey i've seen some of your watches i'd like to check them out what do you think here's my youtube channel and they're lobini. like lobini uh sounds italian but it's chinese full-blown chinese like <laughs> of course and so they the, they responded they're like yeah send us your link and then i i hit them back up i was like what'd you think like should we do a collaboration? And they just like never replied to me. And I was like, me jerks. <laughs> so I was like, well then, all right, screw it. I'll buy your watch myself, I guess. So I picked this one up. Um, it's a dress. Oh man, hang on. I think my, there we go. So it's yeah, like, a it's going. it kind of looks like, oh, the, fancy. like the bottom of Mossier, kind of like that look. Um, that's actually, here's the, here's the kicker. It is a mechanical hand wound seagull movement. Go. Whoa. Uh, is that coming through? Dang it. I'm trying to use my face to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, wait. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Okay. It looks, it looks, kind, of, little... it looks kind of like the, the Farnes ones. Yeah. The Farnes. They also have like that. That's, yeah. that's nice. Day. So it's got the seagull movement and uh, the finishing on it's pretty impressive. And I picked this thing up for under 100 bucks, which is just crazy on ebay you know so i'm always like scan like i said man i i kind of put something on my radar and then i just wait like i'm just like Dave, camping like a, out you have like a you have like a like a monthly budget that you're I like do. okay this is my budget for this month i can't go over it or the wife will kill me yeah so my budget oh, your wife because you're doing this for like a year now <laughs> i think she really saw how you transgressed uh, from you know just the robos and now all of a sudden you're like bam you know we, check it out yeah it so we we set a budget for kind of and, and i gotta say like it's it's a blessing to be able to buy watches in this time right like just to be able to spend yeah, money because yeah, i know there's people out there struggling and we definitely do like it just needs to be said that i think if you're have doing hobbies like this like try to help other people out where you can you know, so I just want to say, because I don't want it to seem like, oh, just blowing money left and right, like no big deal. But like donating, charity, like all that stuff you got to do because it's it's so important, right, for your community. Um, but we do set a budget. And once the budget like is exhausted, then all right, I just got to wait, you know, for the next month. Um, sometimes I get like some ad money. So that helps. But a lot of it is is flipping or rotating through watches. So I'll sell like I think I sold last month till now I've probably sold about four or five of my other watches so how do you sell them do you sell them like on Facebook or do you sell them on on an app or what eBay um and so I, I used to, I don't do eBay anymore because they take a cut but I do offer up which is local kind of like marketplace for Facebook and um I'll just sell them for a fair price like I I don't like to tell people what I buy my watches for sometimes because they'll see my review and then they'll know, Oh, this guy bought this watch for like 40 bucks and he's selling it for a hundred. <laughs> so I kind of like hesitate to tell what I get some deals for. Cause dude, I, I can, sometimes I find some really good deals and um, that's where I take that money and then put towards another watch. So that's what happened with these, like yeah. I had set Christmas money and some other, my monthly watch budget and, I was going to build it up and then I'm like, dang it. Okay. I need to sell this and that, but then I can buy this other watch. That's the itch. <laughs> That's the itch. Yeah. Like, you know, I got to have it now. <laughs> but that having that budget has allowed me to jump on some really good deals because if I didn't have it available, then you miss out. Right. So it's, and I've missed out on a lot. Trust me. Like so many watches I wanted to jump on and I couldn't cause I didn't have the, the money sitting there. Oh, it is what it you is. Got enough now. <laughs> yeah, I'm good now. And the funny thing is, is like these watches, some of them I wear them, I enjoy them. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't love it. And, you know, I end up getting rid of it. You get rid of it. Yeah. It's well, how many, how many pieces do you have right now that you're like, I, I, I like these and I'm not giving them away. Like these are my pieces. And, Cause you I know you have a lot. You know? I will, yeah, man, I think I, so my last day of the collection, I had about 40, um, but I really, this year and I, right, I just bought three, which is stupid, but I want to, <laughs> I want to get down to 10. If I can 
pair the collection to 10, I feel like I can scratch the itch. I'll have the dress, the dive, a little bit of everything and color, yeah. di color yeah. dials, gold, two-tone, whatever, like to wear it. I pretty much have like a, a collection that will give me everything I want because I know what I like and don't like. But then I come across the- So you're like downside this. your half to 40 to 10 watch collection. That's one of my, that's why I want to get to. I don't know if I'll be able to get there by the end of 21, but that's where I'd like to head because I know looking at my watch box, I can tell you just, I could point them all out. Like I don't wear that. I don't wear that. I don't wear that. So there's watches that are in the collection. Impulse buy, impulse buy, impulse buy. Yeah. <laughs> like a great example is the, uh, the Guan Chin, which is an homage of the um, triple calendar long jeans. And I love the look of it. That's the, the white, the white dial with the black yeah. Uh, strap, right? Yeah, exactly. And, blue hand. Mm -hmm. and it has the little uh, moon crescent shape hand that goes around the date. Like it's four sub dials. I think that's a beautiful watch. Too, though. It's, it is it's, very elegant, um, gorgeous looking design. It's automatic, but it, it let me know that I can't buy the lawn jeans, even though they're not very expensive. I think it's like less than two grand maybe. Um, I can't buy that watch because I don't wear, I won't wear it. Like I don't get dressed it. up enough and I reach for wear these others. Yeah. So there's definitely a purpose in those homages, I would say for sure. That's good though, because yeah, that's, that's, that's one way to see it. You know, you have it and they're like, mm, not going to do anything with it. Yeah. So you've had the, the one that is homage too, probably won't do anything with it either. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at, but I want to get to 10 and then I want to save up for a luxury piece that was, I've, I said this in my other video too, but so yeah, I, I kind of want to buy my first luxury watch this year. So we'll see. This year? Not if I keep hey, buying it to sell. Which one was it? Because you have so many videos. <laughs> um, which one was it? So right now I'm kind of kicking between the Nomos Tangente and and that does, I was, it does have the alpha mechanical hand wind movement. Um, I did confirm that yesterday. I was looking into a bit more or the Tudor Black Bay 36 or the 41, which doesn't have the dive bezel, no date, kind of like the Explorer, but Tudor's version. Kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Because the Tudor is also, they're, they're nice watches. The one that you have, the, the other one, not the, the Explorer, but the other one, the, the one that's you need to get patina. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, like, Submariner? You know, browns. Yeah. They also have the brown Tudor, just like that. Right, right. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Glycine. Um, yeah. yeah. They have the bronze uh, Black Bay. But I kind of have the glycine, so I feel like, well, I wouldn't want to get the bronze tutor because I already have the glycine, and I'm not going to get rid of the glycine, so that scratches that itch. But um, I like the everyday function and look of the 36 and 41. If you have to, to narrow down to just one wash day, that's all you get. You can take one wash to the island oh, that you're going to be stuck to forever. But which watch would that be and why see you're putting me in a tough spot because my wife is gonna know that i better pick the, the one watch that uh you didn't pick the, the, the one that she gave me for the anniversary yeah yeah well, you know what's funny about that it's the frederick constant it's a dress watch but it has 100 meters water resistance and a screw down crown so i technically could put it on a strap and, cool. and, yeah. and go wherever with it. So that's probably not a bad thing if I were to pick that watch, but it's definitely dressy. Um, taking that out of the have equation. You, have you ever put it on a, have you ever put it on a date or something? Did you try it or not really? Um, I haven't. I, that's a really good, I wonder if I put it on like a, a yeah, like something like dressy gray or, yeah. You know what? I think I did. I think I did a swap video and I tried it just to see. Um, but I don't think it looks, I don't think it looks right. Like it, it's no. too dressy. Yeah. Um, you could probably do like a leather NATO and it would look okay. But as far as like a nylon or seatbelt, that's probably not. And it's a, it's a 23 millimeter lug width. It pisses me off, but <laughs> that's, another. yeah, that's such a weird side. <laughs> Come on guys. What are y'all doing? Um, you know, what would be a good 
thing to try out someday is the Artem sailcloth strap in 23 millimeter. I bet you that would work on that watch. It would probably look good. So maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll pick one up. Um, I guess that's a fear you can make. Say that again. I guess that's a video you could make. <laughs> yeah, another one. Yeah. You know, I think it's funny because that to sell Explorer would probably be the one. It, it really of all wow, you really love this watch. I'm in the honeymoon phase, so I'm saying that now, right? So take that with a grain of salt. I would have said the Vice, um, the Royal Oak, or maybe even the Rokos, but they don't have the water resistance and the Rokos doesn't have the Sapphire. So again, like I said, there's always a trade-off in some of these homages. But the Rokos, is it a screwed down crown, the Rokos? Mm -hmm. Is it a screwed down crown, the Rokos? No, huh? Oh. No. Yeah, so that's the, the trade-off and it's mineral crystal, so it's kind of a bummer. Um, but that Explorer, man, it it literally ticks all the boxes and you could put it on leather and dress it up. You know what, but I think this is something else. But I, I don't know if you have this, or I think a lot of people do have this. And they're like, uh, well, uh, is the watch, is it waterproof, water resistant? Okay, does it have a screw down crown? And it's like, no. And oh, that's a deal breaker. But how many times do you dive into a pool or don't go dive? You know, you don't. Even when I take a shower, I take off my watch. Even if it's screwed down crown, I don't I don't take a shower with my watch. So Same I think it's just, it's just something that you have in your mind that you yeah. think it will hold on I mean, how many times in a day do you have to fall, fall in a puddle of water that's like, you know, four, five feet? <laughs> oh, oh, good thing I have the screw down watch, you know? Yeah. The screw down ground. But, it's the same. I don't know, it's, it's the same fear with your cell phone. Oh, is it? Is it? Can my phone go underwater? Well, I mean, how often are you going to drop your yeah, phone in, in the toilet? Drop it on water. <laughs> like, so I think yeah. it's the same way. I agree. There's something there that shouldn't be there. Um, but yes, I think I like the option of if I wanted to go do some sporting event, go to the beach, go to the pool, go wherever, like, I don't have to worry about my strap and my yes. watch, right? right? But realistically, if I go to the beach, I'm taking my rings off because they're meteorite and they're going to rust. So I leave those in the hotel room or wherever. And I do the same with my watch. If I or wear yeah. a watch, unless you have a tea shop or something, you know, yeah, it's just going to say, yeah, it'll be something that I don't really care about and take it to the beach. I get that you can take your Rolex to the beach and whatever, but I mean, I'm probably going to get a tan and want to get rid of my watch tan, you know, like, so I wouldn't be wearing one anyway. Like, it looks at your wrist and be like, oh, that's a watch junkie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy. <laughs> look at that guy. From where the watch is the bed. Look at that psycho no. over there wearing a watch, trying to get a tan. Yeah, um, it's cool, man. I don't know. I think you're right, though. Something's definitely there with overkill on some complications or features that we really don't need. Oh, no. that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Well, I think we're probably at our hour. I think, man, we probably went over, which is cool. I really enjoyed our our talk. Did we go over? Did now? you do a roof check? Okay. Yeah, yeah, my brew. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you that's change right. watches or yeah. what? <laughs> the Monaco, the Monaco. Yeah, the homage. Well, it's not really what. It's, I guess it's technically an homage. It pays homage to some of those, the looks, the design. Yeah. You could say that. I mean, I mean, yeah, what is homage anyways? You know, just, you know, something that looks like it or not doesn't, doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's all nice. It's all nice. As long as it uh, you know, makes you happy and you're happy with it. That's right. As long as you enjoy care. it. I don't think people like I think people go out and be like, hmm, who can I say has a shitty watch today? <laughs> you do. I don't think there are bridges like that around, you know? Or if you're like, hey, nice car, crap watch. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's great, man. Well, Brian, I man, I'm so happy we finally got to do our little uh, chat here, watch conversation video or podcast, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've been looking yeah. forward to this for months, man, for you to get your, your internet and then set up a date. And oh man, that was, that was crazy. The internet. Yeah. Half a year. It took me half a year, guys, to get my internet going. 
All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed my chat here with Brian Trump. Again, he's got a really cool YouTube channel. If you're looking to increase your production quality and learn new things, tutorials, he does all that kind of stuff. And of course, a couple watch videos here and there. So I'm gonna link his channel in the description. So you definitely go give him a follow and check out this video that he's done. It's a tutorial that has to do with improving your lighting and your videos. And I'm always learning new stuff from him. So I appreciate it. And as always, may the Schwartz be with you. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. Take care.